It's reasonable to think the New Zealand Army, Navy and Air Forces all inherited the tradition of live mascots off their British counterparts and when they ceased the practice in the mid-1970s, New Zealand followed suit. There was a massive crossover between an official mascot and an adopted overseas pet as well. And I didn't discriminate between the two in this video. Official mascots often stayed put in New Zealand. For example, the frigate Southland's sheep definitely didn't travel the seven seas. Cats and dogs feature prominently here, and if you're into bulldogs, you'll be rolling in it. Sadly, I could only find written records on some of what I would term the more colourful mascots. Say, Jimmy the Monkey from the Otago Mounted Rifles. Others are preserved in photographic record, but remain nameless. Examples include these two anonymous dogs from early on. More of the great unknown to come in this video. The research jackpot was getting a photo with the accompanying story. There will of course be numerous other beasts I've not included here. By all means, let the other viewers know about them in the comments. This is part one of a two-part series and ends at the close of the First World War. There's a lot to cover and I'll do my best to do it in chronological order or thereabouts. No promises. And again, thanks to the people and institutions who are saving both valuable and entertaining history like this. Their stories and these photos cross borders. Rest assured, you don't have to be a Kiwi to enjoy this video. And take my word for it, I am leaving the best to the very last. Unbelievable doesn't go close to summing up the last photo in this series. Away we go. Pocono starts us off. A wiry-haired terrier of dubious parentage. He was adopted as a regimental mascot of the Queen's 50th in 1864. They were involved in the Whanganui campaign of the Maori Wars. Pocono travelled with the regiment when they were transferred to Sydney in 1886 and returned with them in 1869. First equal, perhaps, a goat attached to the A and C companies of the Royal Irish Regiment. If you look to the bottom left, that photo was taken in Whanganui in the late 1860s. Alexander Ball Pup. Now into the Great War, and we have Alexander Ball Pup, a Targo Mounted Rifles mascot. On the right is Sergeant Herbert Birch from Dipton. He had fought with Kitchener in the Boer War. Seated is Jeremiah Cuff. As a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by the servicemen you will be viewing, and Cuff was killed at Chonok Bear. On a more lighter note, Sammy the Collie, and trotting ahead of the parading contingent of the New Zealand Expeditionary Force on a sunny Auckland day in September 1914. The ship's cat aboard the hospital ship Navasa, a firm favourite with the Kiwi nurses who served on board. That vessel was at one point moored off the Gallipoli beachhead. Incredibly, the Navasa was also serving the same role in the Normandy landings. The Tame Hawk with the Machine Gun Squadron in Egypt. Old Peter, the horse, seconded from the Australians in the Egyptian desert in 1916. Rona the Great Dane, attached to the Auckland Mounted Rifles, pictured in a London hospital of all places. When her handler, who's actually in the bed, got wounded, she became inconsolable and the two were united at his bedside. The press was there to catch the reunion. Caesar, 
which you'll probably notice the name is misspelt. The most famous of all being the first Kiwi animal to earn a decoration, the Blue Cross for Bravery. This brave dog would go out into no man's land and indicate where a wounded man could be located or where he was buried. Died in the thick of the battle. On your screen now is a book about his exploits, the author of which just happens to be a relative of Caesar's handler, a stocking filler if I ever saw one. Nan the Egyptian goat was with the New Zealand engineers. This photo was taken in April 1918 and likely to have been in Palestine. Snowy, as if to reinforce the theme, Kiwi troops weren't at all diminutive when it came to thinking up pet names. Snowy the cat was with the New Zealand Tunnelling Company. That photo was done in 1918. The Maori contingent saved the day with the magnificently named and presented at Tipperary. His image there was captured in 1916. Someone had to hold the goat when the New Zealand Medical Corps had their photograph taken and that was that gentleman. Moses the Donkey in France in 1918 along with the New Zealand Army Service Company. Something completely different for your viewing pleasure. New Zealand Field Artillery Lieutenant Stevens and his Lizard. Stevens, by the way, rose to be a Major General in World War II. I'll leave that Lizard on the screen for a sec and ask you that if you're enjoying this video, it would be appreciated if you could pass it along the backs, suggest it to others who may enjoy the content. And cheers and onwards as we continue with World War I. Back to the tried and true a bulldog, Ponake, snapped in 1916 and with a moniker like that, had to have something to do with Wellington. Frida the Great Dane, mascot of the New Zealand Rifle Brigade. Her collar is up in the Waiuru Army Museum. Her grave in Cheshire, England is still being maintained as you can clearly see. Finally, uh, this is Torty. Indeed, young Torty is a tortoise. Big deal, I hear you say. Torty was rescued and then adopted by a Kiwi medic, Stuart Little. Served in Greece in, wait for it, World War I. Smuggled home to Dunedin by Stuart. At this juncture, I need to explain. I have aged that photo to make it look old. This is the actual one, and that was taken five years ago. That's right, as at publication of this video, Torty is still alive today. Has now been part of three generations of the little family. See, I told you I'd leave the best to last. Thanks for supporting my late life project run out of my messy studio in Christchurch. I hope you enjoyed viewing this as much as I enjoyed making it. Number two in the series is already on the cutting floor. Not that I know what a cutting floor is. Clearly I'm not big on special effects. I let the story weave its own magic. It's not hard with stuff like this. Spot you shortly with number two. Bye for now.